right, September 18th, 2019, boy, all glory to God, you know, I made that video a minute ago, I ought to be ashamed of making that video, I really ought to be ashamed, uh, you know, people ought to be ashamed that when somebody sits there and says that they want to repent, that they shouldn't declare that, they, that they're repenting because they think that they're being saved by repentance, and that, they, that they're being saved by works. They ought to be ashamed. Christians ought to be ashamed of themselves. Just like I should be ashamed by claiming believing is works. But I'll tell you this right now. It's just like show me your, just show me your works without your faith or whatever that scripture says. You know, basically saying your faith is absolutely worthless without works. That, that a person without works and a person, a person can have faith and a person without works... I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna, it doesn't make sense how someone can claim that repentance is works and believing isn't works if they do the same thing. Believing puts sins into remission and repentance puts sins into remission. Hmm. So, yeah, I ought to be ashamed of making that video, but then I think people ought to be ashamed by people thinking that they need to repent, that that's works. I mean, really, Christians ought to be ashamed of themselves. Everywhere. If you think that repentance is works, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Because I haven't... You know, it, it, let, let me tell you this. I'm going to tell you this right now. Out of all these years that I've been alive, alive 44 years... I went to church as a child, and I haven't been a Christian all my life, and I didn't go to church all my life, but I have never, ever, 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 ever heard but only one person. And it's been within the last year that said that the Sabbath was Sunday. Yet everybody sits there and says, you shouldn't go to church on Sunday because you're basically saying that the Sabbath is on Sunday. No, actually you're not supposed to do nothing on the Sabbath. So if you're celebrating the Sabbath, you shouldn't get off your butt and get in your car and drive down to go to church. So, how could somebody sit here and declare that a person is going to church on Sunday and that they're, they're believing that the Sabbath is on Sunday? And that they ought to be ashamed of themselves for going to church on Sunday thinking that the Sabbath is on Sunday, yet I've only heard one person in 44 years that have ever said that the Sabbath was on Sunday. And you know what? I have yet to hear one person out of four years now that I've been sitting here making videos on YouTube since God poured the Holy Spirit on me that made me a watchman. I have yet to hear one person say that we are saved by repentance. Not one. And yet people are out here claiming that if I want to repent that I'm saying that I'm self-righteous. How can I be self-righteous when I know what Jesus did at the cross? He did for every one of us. But as long as people don't plan to be in obedience to him, they are not going to reside. Christ is not going to reside in a disobedient Christian. I don't care if you believe, you have faith, or whatever you want to sit here and profess. The only thing like I said, and I've seen the scripture. I've seen it with my own two eyes. I mean, I couldn't tell you word for word where it's at. It's right there in that Bible. I saw it with my own two eyes that it says that God would work repentance through people. As if this is a, a process that God actually helps us with. But the problem is that if a person doesn't want to repent and they want to stay a part of the flesh in the darkness, how, how are they ever going to come to repentance through God? So if God, using the Holy Spirit, wants us to quit doing the things that we're doing because of God, through His Holy Spirit, His Spirit points out to us what is right and what is wrong. When we're going to do something that is wrong, we get convicted of it. And if people are not going to acknowledge it, and they're going to go through with the flesh and love the flesh, the, the cars, the limelight, the, to be Hollywood and to be millionaires and to have a, and all these million dollar mansions that all these big time pastors have and they don't even care about anybody homeless on the streets. You would think if they had a, a 10,000 square foot house that they would actually be thinking about maybe selling the house and living in an 800 square foot house and giving all the money away. But no, it's all about the money and the flesh and the limelight 
timeline and how much I know about God because I'm a know-it-all and, and, and blah, 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 blah. But you know what? You know, who cares, huh? Who cares? I know so many Christians are so far from the truth. And I don't understand how. You read it right there in God's word. But you guess what? You ignore it and take man's word. A flawed system is man's word. A flawed system is exactly what man's word is. Man should have never declared if you could lose salvation or not. Man should have never declared you couldn't lose salvation. Should have never. Should have never. As long as a person thinks that they can't lose salvation, they're going to be sitting here watching Will Ferrell shows where they talk about private parts on a human body and cursing to the, to the, to the cows come home and everybody's going to be like, I'm a good Christian. I'm a good Christian because I'm watching this foul mouth. Uh, what? I shouldn't use Will Ferrell. I should use anybody under the under the boat. I mean, throw everybody out of the boat. Everybody. And their prosperity gospel. Through God, you can prosper. You could be dead broke, and if you've got God working in your life, you'll move on. I know you'll move on. See, I have a problem with contentment. I have a problem with contentment. I have a problem with contentment. But I'm wondering how everybody is so content not following God's word. I don't understand it. People should have never claimed you couldn't lose salvation. Nowhere in the entire Bible does any scripture. Just like people that believe in flat earth, they'll throw all the scriptures out there. This, is, this, that, this, that. Evidently, if you're on the other side of the earth and you're on the bottom, it's impossible that you could be standing up. But I thought all things were possible through God. Isn't that what people have always said? People say God looks at the heart. But people only honor God with their lips. So many. Only with their jibber jabbers. Hmm. Okay. What about the heart? What about the heart? Well... That's the day and age we're in right now. So, again, unless there's, a, unless there's a crack in concrete, I know you can't plant a seed. And that's the foundation people are right now, is concrete. With no crack. And people don't even can't even imagine what's coming. And they're all going to still be here. All, I mean, nine out of ten Christians are still going to be here. You know, I would love, I mean, you're going to think that I'm being mean by saying this, but you're going to, I would love that the rapture would be before the tribulation start. But for years, Christians knew that they could be persecuted, which has been happening for years. So we cannot say that God, that this stuff was not already happened, just like the apostasy is happening right now. I know the Antichrist hasn't been revealed yet. So many people think the Antichrist has been revealed. But with so much deception out here and what so many people blibber blab out their mouth, I can't, I mean, I wonder how much people have the Holy Spirit if they haven't been deceived. Hmm. 
I mean, they're deceived by believing that repentance is works, but make sure and give people the credit to Jeff by saying, believe in his works, man. I know it is. If, if repentance is, I know believing is. I'm telling you, I ought to be ashamed of even making that video, but I'm not taking it down because I'm going to point out the faults. And you're going to point a fault? I'm going to point a fault. So you can believe and be saved, huh? And believe and puts a person's sins into remission. Hmm. Works salvation, people. <laughs> I'm telling you, absolutely, I ought to slap myself, I ought to slap myself bad. Mm, feel like doing it. I mean, would people call in on me? Would people call in on me if I did slap myself? Boy. So, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, the church is gone. It's literally gone. Literally gone. <sighs> People in their denominations, I promise you, going to be a bad thing. Should have never sold yourself on man's word. If you had, you should have never, never, Man's word does not stand the test. Why can I not quit making these videos? Yeah, why? I do care that people make it. I know right now, as long as people are living in sin, they're not going to make it. Not going to make it at all. As long as people are living in sin, people are not going to make it. They're going to think that they were right with God, and that they're not going to make it. to crucify the flesh. God didn't say, just like I made a comment a minute ago, God didn't say he was going to crucify the flesh. We were supposed to crucify the flesh. If that means daily, that means daily. We weren't supposed, if a person calls themselves a Christian, they were not supposed to be a part of this high life out here. I made that comment to someone earlier. We're not supposed to be a part of this high life. And people choose to still, I mean, I'm guilty. I'm guilty to watching this filth on TV. On your normal TV today, what is it? What is normal the program's about? Someone cheating on their spouse or talking about sexual parts that all of Satan. And people are watching stuff all of Satan. You know, I at least have done one thing, and it would be nice if other people did. If you're going to listen to certain types of music out here, you shouldn't listen to music where people cuss. And if you're going to listen to, uh, you, you shouldn't listen to music where it talks about sex and all these things. Because I told God a long time ago that, and I still listen to my 80s rock. The only ones I don't listen to are the things that I should not listen to. And, I, and I'm not going to let it get overwhelmed on me. I've let it get overwhelmed on me the majority of my life. I know right now, oh boy. Oh, I'm, we were all of Satan going to these concerts when we were young. Getting high and getting drunk and going to these concerts. I know I had brought up one thing I should have never brought up, and I can't bring it up again. Nah, 
I'd love to sit here and say it because it does hurt to know the truth. It does hurt to know the truth. You're either with God or you're against God. That's it. And if you're living for the flesh and your sin and everything and you make up all these excuses, that's not living for God. That's living for Satan. I once saved is no different than saying that you shall not die. Whatever Satan said in the garden, it's the same thing. It's a flawed system. Nowhere does eternal security. I don't think it's anywhere in the entire Bible. This Bible, for some odd reason, has uh, d this eternal security in it and it's not even in the bible eternal life is if you have christ you don't have the holy spirit you don't have eternal life per romans 8 and 9 because you wouldn't have christ and then the wages of sin is death and every scripture that pertains to jesus christ in here about dying for your sins and all these things all these scriptures in the Bible about Jesus Christ, as long as you don't have the Holy Spirit and you got a fake spirit or you've been given up to a seared conscience, a reprobate mind, carnal mind, and a hardened heart, or all these things, as long as, you, as long as you're sitting here not living for God and not following His Word, not being obedient, not being 100% with Him, there is no eternal life. I know I made a video talking about eternal life the other day, and a lot of a lot of uh, theologians believe it's at the it, it's after a person dies that a person has eternal life. But I'm not going to claim that. I'm not going to claim it. Whatever it is, whatever it is. But I'll tell you this: if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you would think this is. I'm telling you. Like I said, I gotta quit making these videos. I'm not trying to be so personal. I'm not trying to be rude and crude and 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 I, I if if you had the Holy Spirit and you were gonna go and somebody told you come to the bar, it's my birthday party. We got a room to ourselves, a whole bunch of friends, and you weren't drinking and you weren't a person that gets high the Holy Spirit would probably convict you and let you know not to go there. I don't understand. What are people out here preaching? That if you're a Christian, that you can go out here and hang with sinners when God's living word, right here. I mean, it's right here. Literally, two or three places in God's living word says, do not hang around with sinners. So when you have Christmas... Do you think it's cool for when your when your family comes around and they're going to get drunk and you're going to get, and they're going to get high and you're going to be sitting there around them? I don't even think it's cool then. You put yourself in a position where you're going to sin. No wonder why people say I sin. I sin. Yeah. Who put yourself in that position? Who sit here and literally grabbed you by the hand and pulled you to the sin? called giving in to temptation when we were supposed to fight it. It's what crucifying the flesh. That's what part of crucifying the flesh. Get rid of sin. Get rid of sin. People say, you can't get rid of it. Paul says, Paul this, Paul that. Can't get rid of it. Well, what are you supposed to do? Ask God to help you with your issues. You know what? I haven't even asked. I have not even asked. I mean, I'll tell the truth. I have not even asked. So has anybody, I mean, has people taken this to God and said, please help me with this? If I've got a pornography, pornography issues or if I've got uh, a, a you know, smoking cigarette issue or uh, a pothead issue or alcoholism problem. I mean, have you? will anybody take it to God? God will solve that issue. If you're going to give 100%, he'll give you 120 billion percent. No doubt in my mind. You know, I hope someone made it 19 minutes plus seconds into this video. Um, I remember one time I 
gave a guy some money for a quarter bag of weed. And I know people out here in the drug world think that if they get stiffed, something happens and they don't get what they paid for, especially when it comes to a lot of money, that these people deserve death. Well, I had a lot of thoughts because I didn't get my quarter bag of weed that this person should die. Let's think about this for a moment. When you have bad thoughts like that, and people, especially people that are living for God, will have bad thoughts because I never knew how much Satan would be on my, on my trail to get me to flaw. But this girl told me. She told me this was what was that this would be happening. And I wasn't even paying no attention. Never even knew anything. Out of these three years of being a watchman, I never knew. And I was doing so good. I'm not joking. At least the first couple of years, yes, I may have been sinning. I was repenting. I was asking God for forgiveness. I felt the sins go away. How can you sit here and say we're not held accountable for our sins when I asked God for forgiveness and I felt the sins go away? That's a testimony. But no, nobody wants to believe that if it doesn't happen to them, that surely it wouldn't happen for someone else or something. I don't know. I, I give up, but... But I know, I sh well, I, I jumped ahead of myself. I know I should have never had that thought that this person should die because I did not get my quarter bags worth of weed. And I know how to get rid of bad thoughts. In the first place, it's got to be on your heart that when you get a bad thought, that you got to alleviate it right off. I used to at one time, and I'm going to say this, and people are not going to like this. Um, my grandmother always told me, you ask in Jesus Christ and it'll go away. I don't know how many times it went away when I'd have bad thoughts. Then it felt like it wasn't working for me anymore. And... Uh, so, um, and it's happened as of late, having bad thoughts. And like I said, you can believe it if you want. You can, don't have to believe it. You still got your free will. I ain't, it, your will don't have to match my will. But I'll tell you this right now, I've had a bad thought and went. And it went away. So when, if I immediately start thinking of a bad thought and I shake it away, did I sin? Do you think I sinned? I, I sure didn't dwell in my thoughts. You know, when I thought about someone needing to die because I didn't get my marijuana, I dwelled in the bad thoughts. I've seen the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit's done for me when I would get halfway through a cuss word. I've said this before. Why would the Holy Spirit help me I don't know how many times that I would get mad and I'd get halfway through a cuss word and I would stop. How about when there were times that I could have had impure thoughts and I didn't. And believe me, like I said, I've already admitted it before in a video where I messed up when I was driving truck over the road and even when I was in New Mexico is that I was still gambling that whole time and I got to where I was blaming it on God that I wasn't getting ahead of the game and that I wouldn't have what I needed when it was time for, to flee. And I'm telling you this right now, if you're going to live in sin, you should be buying stuff. You, sh you should be buying things. Because I don't think God's going to have your back when the time comes. I don't think God's going to have your back at all. Like I said, I'm a watchman. I know who the wicked are. As long as you're living in sin, you're wicked. Salvation isn't granted to the wicked. How can you be doing the same thing? How can you have the same attitude of sin as you were when you were young? In the youth, 
rebelled against God at youth, when you're out partying, whatever you were doing. Yeah. You can't do that as a Christian. I'm sorry. That's the wrong gospel. Gospel that you can keep on doing what you want to do and inherit the kingdom. That's not the gospel. That's not the word of God at all. Nowhere. You're either going to crucify the flesh or you're going to be living for Satan. Plain and simple. I don't know how people could not notice it. But, like I said, I don't know if anybody made it 25 minutes into this video. But, uh, yeah, you have a bad thought, you shake it off. Guess what? Doesn't it mean something that you're actually doing something? Doesn't it mean something that you take it to heart that when you have a bad thought that you can shake it off and that you could not be having a bad thought no more? I don't know why it quit working when I was saying in Jesus Christ. I don't know if it was because I had no clue why. I don't know how many times it worked before I decided to shake it off. But if you're not willing to sit here and forget about it, you're still going to think about it. <laughs> If I shake it off, I'm not interested in keep on thinking about it. I know sins. I know your thoughts can send you to hell. If you can sin by your thoughts, you can go to hell. I'm telling you, I still, I still know when people look at scriptures in the Bible that there's something wrong with these scriptures. I mean, everybody has always known that the King James was a weird Bible to read from. It had a little bit of weird understanding. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it if God shows you what this stuff means, and He will. It's why it's called the living Word of God, because if God show, wants to show you what it is, He'll show you what it is. He'll show you exactly what it means, but you're not going to ever know everything. You're never going to know everything. You're going to want to be on your A game in this life, not be a know-it-all, because if you're a know-it-all, then you've let your guard down. Right now, where do we live? In this time and age, in this day and age, Everybody is a know-it-all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Remember? Uh-huh. You know, non-believers act like know-it-alls, correct? They act like know-it-alls. They think because they went to college that they're, woo, brilliant. Well, so do a lot of Christians out there. You throw something out there, they know the answer. Well, I'm trying to think how they got the answer. Yeah. Well, like I said, I don't know why I'm jumping back and forth in this video, but I know that people better have God whenever they're going into this tribulations. I know telling how, how much worse the deception is going to get out here. It's already here. I know it is, just like the apostasy is already here. No telling how many people are deceived right now. And as long as you're reading the Bible, something I haven't even fully read, as long as you guys have read the Bible, you guys know God's Word more than I do. Are you, you, pro, are you appropriately using it? Most people aren't. I mean, this, this has got to be the worst messages I've ever heard out here right now. This has got to be the worst I've ever heard. All the falsehoods and the fate. I mean, I, I've never seen anything like it. But I've never seen anything like it. I know this. I know this world's gone. I know the church is gone. You could forget it. I mean, here's so many people that do want to repent, but as soon as they repent, that they know that they're going to go right back into sin. That's a hypocrite. It's a prime example of a dog going back to its vomit. That's why the Bible sits there and tells us all this stuff. For a person who doesn't know all the whole Bible. I sure know enough. Sure know enough that you are going to make it if you're Christ-like and humble. But if you're not Christ-like, boy, I don't know how anybody's going to make it. Some things people come out of their mouth ain't so Christ-like. I know right now a lot of people will profess they believe and they cuss. As long as they're cussing, where's the fruit? Where's the beef? Where's the fruit? Uh, yeah. Something's wrong here. People's twisting God's word. I mean, way out of proportion. Running out of time. The clock's ticking down. I mean, I'm not saying this stuff to be hateful. It's more so, I mean, 
Nobody could hurt you if you're living for God. No matter if you are here when the tribulations happen, if the, tri if the rapture is mid-trib. I think it's mid-trib. But guess what? No matter what the case is, nothing can happen to you. But everything can happen to you if you don't have God. Everything could happen to you. We're going to go into the tribulations with the majority of Christians by far not living for God. That's exactly what's going to happen. Well, like I said, I can't talk like everybody else. I can't be like everybody else. No watered down, no lukewarm, no tickling of the ears. I could care less. I mean, people are going to hear the truth. And as long as you're living in sin, you're not of God. I mean, it tells you this stuff. It tells you who you're a part of. I'm really not trying to be hateful. I'm just trying to tell the truth. I'm telling you right now, if God had not given me what knowledge that he has given me, I would know nothing. I know very little and can remember very little from church. Very little. Yep. All glory to God. Please, people, wake up.